Hello and welcome to the kitchen table this Wednesday. It's Alison Southern here from Melksham Team Ministry. I hope you're having a good day. Today the weather is sunny outside but we've just had the most torrential rain and that seems to be a bit of a metaphor for life doesn't it? Sometimes it is sunny and shiny and other times we are drenched and can feel overwhelmed. I don't know about you but I've been watching some of the Olympics. Now it'll be clear to all of you that I'm not really the athletic kind. I can just about manage to hobble around on two sticks some days. But I always love to watch the athletes, their determination, the amount of effort and energy they put into being the best that they can be. Everything working towards those moments, seconds, that will make the difference between them gaining the glory of a gold medal or maybe losing out completely. The Olympics, of course, started many, many years ago in ancient Greece. At that point, it was seen as a way of giving glory to the gods. It was about your body being part of praise and worship. And when athletes competed, it was as though it was the pinnacle of their faith and their crying out to God. Of course, the modern Olympics are different to that, but still full of athletes who are working towards that one moment in time and have huge amount of pressure upon them. Pressure largely put on by themselves, but of course also by those around them wanting to see them do the best that they can do, be the best that they can be. Just yesterday, we watched as one of those athletes decided that she wasn't in the right place, the headspace wasn't there, and to actually step back from what she was doing. And the courage that takes to actually say, I'm not there at the moment, I can't do this today, is actually really profound. It takes courage to say enough is enough today. Whether you're a top athlete or whether you're a mum in a house full of kids off of school or whether you are busy at work feeling completely overwhelmed by the number of tasks that you have to do, each and every one of us can sometimes feel overwhelmed. This pandemic has increased the sense of powerlessness that we all feel. And that for athletes must be really difficult because the one thing that athletes have is that drive, that focus, that energy that says, this is where I'm going towards. But with the postponed Olympics and with having to try and keep everything in peak condition over a 16 month period where that was almost impossible and yet they have achieved it. But for you and for me, keeping everything going is also really important and understanding that even though we are sometimes feeling helpless that when we care for ourselves and when we allow ourselves to be cared for by others then we can change that feeling of helplessness. It's interesting that the Olympics have always got a multi-faith department, they've got this huge team of people from different faiths, Christians, Muslims, Hindus, Jews, all worshipping, all finding support in their faith as they are reaching the peak of their physical ability to have somebody around them helping them with that spiritual understanding of who they are and what that means, especially in moments of failure or in moments of loss. This year it's been different. The priests and the imams and the rabbis have all had to find new ways of connecting with all those sports people, many of them doing services by Zoom or by YouTube. Does that sound familiar? Trying to connect with people, trying to 
help them to understand that even when the body is that pinnacle of fitness and everything is going absolutely as you would want it to be, there is something more. There is always something greater than you. And for many athletes, that's a really important part of who they are and how they get themselves into a place of well-being. So for the Olympic Village, just like for villages all over our world, connecting with faith has been harder than it's ever been before. We continue to find ways of connecting across the airways here from the kitchen table. But we also know that it's important to be able to move into real space, real time, real connections. And as we continue to step forward gently, carefully, cautiously, we step forward in hope and anticipation of meeting, of gatherings, of sharing, whatever it is that can be a struggle for you in your life, as well as celebrating the joys and the moments of absolute bliss Weddings are going ahead now and there is real joy in that moment that for some of the brides and grooms have been put off for 18 months. That moment of bliss that we share in together is really special. So whether it's a gold medal, a wedding day vow shared, or a cup of tea with a friend and a conversation that says, how are you today? How can I help today? What's your story? All important moments. Each and every one of us has a story and a race to run. I hope your race is going well today. I hope you feel the love of others around you. And I hope if you are feeling like today you just cannot bring what you need to bring, then know that God is with you. And know that we're here too, caring, ready to listen, ready to help. So be in touch. Reach out to other people and know that we are all capable of the most amazing miracles in every moment of our lives. When we open our eyes and our hearts and our hands just to receive the glories that we have in front of us. Enjoy those special moments and I'll see you on Sunday morning from the kitchen table. Don't forget to come to the cream teas on Saturday if you can make it at St Andrews. Two till four and maybe we'll have one of those moments of real conversation outside in the sunshine, across a cup of tea and a scone. Bye for now.